Hello, I'm Dr. Betty Maloney, and welcome to an introduction to human babesiosis. This presentation is part of Invisible International's Medical Education Initiative. The program, which includes a large library of free CMEs, is generously supported by the Monte Carlo Family Foundation. I'll be covering these five topics. The learning objectives are listed here. I developed this module and I have no financial conflicts to disclose. Off-label use of antibiotics will be discussed. Let's consider this case, a 64-year-old female who visited her sister on Martha's Vineyard. While there, both women were diagnosed and treated for Lyme disease, but our patient, who hails from Indiana, did not recover. Her ongoing symptoms include headache, myalgia, fatigue, poor concentration, and fever. As you may have guessed from the title of this presentation, she has babesiosis. Babesia pathogens are red blood cell parasites and they produce symptoms that are very malaria-like. Babesia species have been subdivided into four clades. The human pathogens are listed here. Babesia microti is the most prevalent and well-described species and is classified as a clade one organism. More than 100 species of Babesia and Thalaria infect animals. Some species infect both humans and animals. Distribution of these pathogens is quite wide. Babesia infect a wide range of animals, including cattle, horses, swine, sheep, goats, cats, and dogs. Agricultural costs from these infections are significant. The tick vectors involved in disease transmission vary between Babesia species and geographic differences are evident. Babesia diversions is found in Europe and possibly North Africa, while Babesia bovis and Babesia bigemina are widespread in tropical and subtropical regions. Cases of human babesiosis are reported primarily in temperate zones. This is an emerging infection and study data is limited. As this map demonstrates, only a few studies have been performed outside of the U.S. Of the seven known Babesia pathogens, these four are notable for various reasons. As mentioned earlier, Babesia microti is the most prevalent and most studied of the species. Babesia divergens, found in Europe, is the most lethal. While the other Babesia are vectored by Exodus tick, Babesia duncani is not. Babesia odicole is the most recently discovered species. Like Babesiosis in animals, the species causing human cases have a regional distribution. This map depicts where the different species have been found. Bear in mind that the map was generated prior to the discovery of Babesia odicole. Human Babesia pathogens are primarily transmitted by Exodus ticks. As these ticks expand their ranges, it follows that cases of Babesiosis will be seen in more locales. However, it appears that Babesia expansion is restricted to those areas where Lyme disease is already present. Recall that Exoides ticks in the U.S. are also capable of transmitting Borrelia burgdorferi, the agent of Lyme disease, Borrelia miyamotoi, Anaplasma phagocytophyllum, and three relatively rare pathogens, Poisson virus, Borrelia maoni, and Ehrlichia euclarensis. Thus, it's possible that Babesia and these other pathogens can infect patients concurrently. In fact, 20% of Babesiosis patients have concurrent Lyme disease. The epidemiology in the United States is changing, 
there are now 10 higher risk states, Connecticut, Maryland, Maine, Minnesota, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Wisconsin. Among reported cases, 70% became symptomatic during the summer months. The median age was 63 years. Age is a contributing factor for hospitalization. Note the difference in the hospitalization rates between people in their second decade of life and those in their ninth. Not surprisingly, across all age groups, asplenic patients have higher hospitalization rates. Transmission is primarily via tick bite. Most human pathogenic species are transmitted by exodes ticks, and they are pictured on the left. The exception is Babesia otocoli, which is transmitted by Dermacenter albopictus, seen on the right. Hundreds of transfusion transmitted cases have been documented, and the mortality is significant. Given that, and knowing the regionality of blood banking, in 2019, the FDA recommended screening blood donation in the 10 higher risk states plus Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Virginia, and the District of Columbia. Additionally, cases of vertical transmission have also been documented. Let's consider the pathophysiology of the infection. This diagram depicts the life cycle of Babesia microti. While vectors and hosts differ for each species of Babesia, the basic tick-host transmission cycle is similar for all. The lower portion, in red, represents the enzoic cycle between Ixoides scapularis and a white-footed mouse. On entry to the blood, sporozoides invade red blood cells and form trophozoides and merozoides via asexual reproduction. Release of merozoides ruptures red blood cells, causing intravascular hemolysis and allows for the infection of other erythrocytes. Infected erythrocytes are recognized by the spleen as abnormal and are removed by splenic macrophages. The absence of this process in asplenic patients explains why they are at higher risk of hospitalization and death. Babesio organisms aggregate within blood vessels, which can cause microthrombi and are associated with coagulation abnormalities, such as DIC. Increased aggregation in rigidity of red blood cells often leads to the development of acute respiratory distress and non-cardiac pulmonary edema. Fragmentation of red blood cells can also lead to blockages of capillaries in many of these organs and body systems. Clinical presentations are variable. Heavily infected patients will be quite symptomatic. On the other end of the spectrum are the asymptomatic. Symptoms are similar to those of malaria, another erythrocyte parasitic infection. Fever, chills, sweats, headache, fatigue, and malaise are very common. Other common symptoms are listed here. Unlike other exoides transmitted infection, where nausea, anorexia, vomiting, and abdominal pain are uncommon, these babesiosis symptoms are often quite prominent. Five years of surveillance data found that these eight symptoms, fevers, chills, thrombocytopenia, myalgia, anemia, headache, sweats, and arthralgia were present in more than 50% of the patients. This table from a June 2023 paper using reported data from 2011 through 2021 found that neurologic symptoms as a group are not rare. Some symptoms like headache, confusion, and impaired consciousness are relatively common. Physical exam findings are consistent with the known pathophysiology. 
Removal of infected erythrocytes by splenic macrophages can result in splenomegaly and hepatomegaly, and rapid hemolysis of red blood cells can lead to jaundice. Capillary blockages by Babesia aggregates in fragmented red cells can produce retinal infarcts and hemorrhages. Identification of Babesial organisms on a blood smear is definitive laboratory evidence of a current infection. Positive results for Babesia serology, PCR, and fluorescent in situ hybridization, or FISH, are also diagnostic of the infection. Supportive findings include evidence of a hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia. Rapid destruction of erythrocytes may lead to proteinuria, hemoglobinuria, elevated BUN, creatinine, and liver enzymes. Getting back to the patient from Indiana, she appears tired. She is neither pale nor jaundiced. Her spleen and liver are slightly enlarged. Her gait is mildly ataxic. She is mildly anemic and her platelet count is low. There is a slight increase in her billing movement. Most importantly, her blood smear was positive for Babesia. The most common treatment regimen in the United States for Babesiosis is azithromycin plus atovaquone, as it is better tolerated than clindamycin and quinine. Heavy parasitemia requires exchange transfusion. Treatment failures are the result of the rapid emergence of mutations in Babesia cytochrome B, which confer resistance to standard treatment regimens. A detailed discussion on this topic is available in the paper by Renard and Ben Mahmoud. Achieving eradication in immunocompromised patients can be difficult and may require multiple courses of therapy. This is especially true for patients who are using the monoclonal antibody rituximab. Innovative management strategies for human babesiosis are needed. In the case of persistent relapse, one may need to use different combinations of the four standard medications. Another approach is to combine standard agents with other drugs. Atovaquone plus proguanol is a malaria treatment that has been used successfully for babesiosis patients. Other drugs such as doxycycline, moxifloxacin, pentamidine, trimethapine sulfamethoxazole, or artemisinin have also been used. Ligner and colleagues reported that patients concurrently infected with Babesia and Borrelia burgdorferi responded to disulfiram. In summary, Babesiosis is a significant emerging disease that clinicians need to be mindful of. The symptoms and signs are nonspecific, and multisystemic involvement is common. Persistent infection following standard antimicrobial therapies is currently occurring, and resistance is likely to increase as new Babesia mutations develop. Because of this, new approaches are needed. Thank you.